So you're a music producer, a beat maker, maybe even a recording artist, or in fact, you could be doing all three. The frustration that you're finding is that you don't know how to develop your brand when you're working in multiple different genres with multiple different client bases or potential customers. Now, you don't wanna box yourself into one genre, but you're not just a one-hit wonder. You're not just a one-trick pony. You really wanna show the world what you're capable of, and you're frustrated that not everybody's interested in everything you're doing. In this video, I'm gonna show you different strategies and a different mindset tweak that can make you successful in anything you do. Let's get to it. What's going on guys? Adam Ivy, AdamIvy.com. I appreciate you joining me yet again for another one of these videos. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel down below, hit that little bell icon and make sure you're, if you find any value in this video, you give it a thumbs up. So recently I received a DM on Instagram. All my contact information will be in the description box below where you can send in an uh, email. You can join my mailing list at adamivy.com. You could send me a direct message, um, an email, what have you. I'm pretty easy to get a hold of. Your questions run this channel and your viewership helps me you know, stay motivated and it helps me cr uh, cultivate new content. So back to what I was saying. Recently I had an awesome question from a user, not a user, a, a person on Instagram named Glimes Music, G-L-I-M-E-S Music. So uh, check it out. This person asks, hey Adam, I just saw your video about getting the first 500 fans as a music producer for the second time. I really like your tips in the video. Thank you. If you haven't checked out that video, I will put it up here. I think it's over here. Uh, they continue by saying, but I thought, which communities should I try to contribute to as a producer who produces all kinds of music, like drum and bass, dubstep, house, and even hip hop beats? It's hard to build a fan base because you can't deliver enough content, in this case music, to one genre regularly. I appreciate the question. Again, if you have a question, hit me up and I will do my best to answer. Now, this is a great question because a lot of us as creators, especially when we're just getting started, struggle with this, right? We know that we are good at this, we know that we're good at that, and we have passions all the way in between. Now, what I like to relate this to is anybody that's in the public eye. Let's relate it to LeBron James. Let's relate it to Taylor Swift. Let's relate it to Gordon Ramsay, right? These people are incredibly talented. They're philanthropists. They have so much going on in their life, but how did they become a household name? Well, focusing on one thing. See, LeBron James didn't become a household name. He didn't become LeBron James by doing basketball and also doing woodworking as a full-time uh, living. He didn't want to be an auto mechanic, the best auto mechanic. He didn't want to paint cars. He didn't want to, uh, you know, do roofing for a business on the side from basketball. Maybe he did, but he knew what was important. What was important is focusing on the one thing that you have God-given talent at, something that you're passionate about, and something that you want to develop the skills to become the best at. After you can become the best at something, then you can expand. If you want to start a t-shirt brand, okay, you start a t-shirt brand. You can't start the t-shirt brand with also selling handbags and shoes. And what would be a better example than that? Blenders, right? I know it's random, but when you try to do too many things at one time, including different genres, you can dilute yourself and you, the, your time management is absolutely one of the most important things. Because if you can't focus all your time on the thing you want to be best at, there's somebody out there that's going to do that. Now, LeBron James is a pretty good example when it comes to an athlete, but let's talk about music. Let's look at Taylor Swift. Whether you love her or hate her, she's arguably one of the biggest names in the music industry. Now, is she a music producer? No, well, that, that's, that's subjective, but she's obviously a songwriter. She's obviously a performer. She has a great voice, and obviously she does hit after hit after hit, but guess what? She became who she is in the country music genre knowing probably what she wanted to do long-term, but she knew that if she cornered that market and became the biggest name in it, the world would be hers. And that's exactly what happened. Now, she received some pushback, obviously, when she switched from country very publicly to becoming a pop star. But the pop genre had a wide, a much broader base. She could reach way more fans because she had peaked out of the country uh, genre for the most part, let's face it. There's only so many people per genre and pop is one of the largest, broadest brushes that you could paint in the music industry. That relates directly with music producers. That relates directly with beat makers and recording artists. So to answer your question directly, which will help a lot of you guys out there, here's what I want you to do. On a piece of paper, I want you to write down the different genres that you enjoy working in, the different types of videos that you might like creating. And then one by one, I want you to rank them in the order of which you enjoy creating the most. On the other side of the paper, I want you to list them in the skill set. So which one do you think you're best at? It might not always be the same. You might love making hip hop beats, but you know 
straight away that you're best at R&B. That's something that I struggled with. I cannot make a trap beat to save my life. I'm, I'm okay at best, mediocre at best, I should say. I have a lot of friends like Big Bruno. I have Tuan Beatmaker, a lot of, a lot of close friends of mine that are amazing at trap beats, but I'm just not that guy. And they'll tell you the same thing about me. I'm better at certain things than they are. Because let's face it, ego drives us. Ego is what makes us believe in ourselves. Ego, and ego isn't always a bad thing. Ego is the battery that keeps you going when everybody else gives up on you. But what we need to do is focus. We need to have hyper focus. I'm getting goosebumps just saying this because this is what I do every day. I try to find one thing and it's so easy to get distracted. We live in a, we live in a world of social media. We live in a world where we can put up a website in 45 minutes and have something. Uh, you know, I could take this camera that I'm shooting this video with right now and if I got distracted, I could try to start a video company doing music videos and try to make some money. But it's not all about that. It's about finding what your purpose is feeling fulfilled in what you do and taking your talents and really maximizing those talents. Guess what? Let's say you become the number one hip hop producer. Let's say that you do dubstep because let's face it, I got to break this down also. It's also in what your goals are. If you're trying to do hip hop music, if you're trying to do R&B, what are you trying to do? You really need to really need to list these out even on paper in an app, whatever. I'm old school. I have notebooks all over that you can't see. List it out. Who are your, who's your target audience? What do you want to do? Do you want to work with artists directly in a studio setting in your house um, over email? Or do you want to sell beats through leasing, through selling exclusives, through submitting to publishing houses and trying to get picked up on TV, radio? Oh, there we go. Hold on. There we go. We had the video indigestion. It never happens until I'm making these videos. Back to what I was saying. You need to focus, you need to have hyper focus. Because if you're a hip hop music producer and you have all these beats, let's say you have a catalog of, let's just say you just got started out. You have 20 beats, 20 hip hop beats is a whole lot better than having 20 instrumentals done, but some of them are drum and bass, some of them are hip hop, some of them are dubstep. Maybe you have R&B, pop, experimental in there. Uh, maybe you have some kind of like hybrid stuff because let's face it, if we're trying to get better, we wanna try to experiment with different things, especially when we're suffering from beat block, but that's a whole different video. Uh, I think I have a beat block video. I'll put it up in the corner over here, or over here, uh, one of the corners. I never remember, I get disoriented because I'm looking at the lens. What I'm getting at is selling music to hip hop artists. If you're a hip hop artist yourself, you don't want to confuse the market. You want to be known as the best in one thing. And by trying to just, uh, uh, what am I looking for? Um, dilute what you're doing. It's really going to slow down your progress. Let me, let me tell you, if you're known on Instagram as the sneaker guy, you're not going to be trying to do other things like uh, show a, a collection of unique oven mitts, right? I'm the sneaker guy that has oven mitts. I might go grab that hashtag or that, uh, that tag right after here uh, at crazy oven mitts and sneaks. I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm an idiot. Anyway, what I'm getting at is dubstep music, drum and bass, um, house, all those genres are are distributed and promoted much different because that's a that's a listening experience. I might be inclined to tell you to really try to build up a SoundCloud for those rather than trying to sell them individually. And then you could do you eventually want to become a performing DJ, a performing producer like Tiesto, Skrillex, Steve Aoki, those big names, because you can do that with that type of music. With hip hop, it's a little bit different. So you need to understand your market and you need to understand where your energy needs to be focused. We can't do it all, and that's hard to hard to swallow sometimes, but that's just the truth. But here's where the video turns. You can do it all once you're known as the best for something. How many, how many athletes, how many movie stars, how many recording artists, producers, uh, screenwriters do different things once they have massive success in the thing that they're best at, right? You could start a clothing line. Uh, you know, I have a lot of friends out there, Adrian from Anno Dominique Beats, uh, Superstar O, just to name a couple, that are amazing producers, incredible talents, and they've really scaled their businesses to selling drum kits, sound kits, some of the best industry kits, uh, shout out to Superstar O, that are out there. These, I, I can't compete with that. I wouldn't waste my time trying to. Uh, people are trying to, but it's like once you're the best and you're known for something, you also earn the trust of that industry. You earn the trust of that niche. You become a household name. Oh, I'll buy that from him because I trust him. I know that he's talented. Therefore, these might help me in my journey to become as talented as that person or beyond someday. 
This is really the mindset change that changed my life is understanding that taking on too many things will slow you down from everything. I think there's a proverb out there that says, and I've probably referred to this in other videos because I, I kind of try to use it as my mantra at times or my motto, is the man who changed, or the, 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 what is it? Uh, now I'm having a brain fart. It's the man who changes, uh, ch not changes, the person who chases two rabbits catches none, right? If you're constantly blah, 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 you're not going to be able to focus on one thing. I've read a ton of self-development books, a ton of marketing books, and they all kind of boil down to the same thing, that the one thing, in fact, I'm gonna to link to an awesome book in the description box below. It's called The One Thing. Uh, it really helped me focus and understand that small wins, focusing on one task at a time, will make you way more productive. It's, it's. I'll put an Amazon affiliate link, I'm making probably 13 cents per, per copy, but it's definitely a book I recommend. Um, Side note, if you would like me to do like a monthly or bi-weekly book review uh, on this channel, please leave that in the comments below. It's something that I'm thinking about doing. I have two bookcases full of books. Um, I don't read as much as I, I should, but I do read more than most, I would say. Um, and it's just something that I'm passionate about and it's helped me so much because I came from, I don't wanna say I came from nothing, but I came from a very poor background. Uh, I don't have a college degree. Uh, a lot of this is self-taught. In fact, all these videos and everything I do for the most part, self-taught. Now by self-taught, I didn't just figure it out. A lot of it, I watched YouTube tutorials. I took online courses. I read books. I had, I found mentors. I'm not trying to sound like Ty Lopez here in my studio. Knowledge. Knowledge. Um, but guys, I really think that it's, it's very important to figure out what you're best at, not what you love to do the most. It's kind of a mixture between the two. You find what you're best at, based on feedback from others, based on what gives you goosebumps when you're making it, based on uh, just the universe telling you, this is my calling. If you haven't had that experience, I just uh, implore you to do more and find what gives you that excitement in life and then chase that because you can make an income doing pretty much whatever in online uh, 2018, especially this is the best time in the world to jump headfirst into what you love and create an income. And that's what I'm trying to help you guys do here on this channel. Speaking of this channel, if you haven't yet, please subscribe. If you found any at all, any value in this video, I uh, ask you for a thumbs up. Um, and I would love to hear from every one of you as far as if you focus, if you found that you, you know, strip away other things to focus, if that's giving you uh, more success in whatever you're doing. And I'd also like to know what kind of music you focus on the most and what you think you're best at. So whether that's hip hop, trap, uh, which are different. Uh, maybe you're a, a producer that is specializes in sampling, whether you know how to play a bunch of instruments and you do, you know, a pop hybrid uh, of rock. I want to know who you guys are. You know, I, I talk to this camera and you see me, but I don't see you. So in the comments below, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, I'll write up a little article that will eventually be over at adamivy.com about this. <laughs> This is a freaking embarrassing. All right, guys, so I hope that this video brought you genuine value. I hope that this little mindset hack that I used years ago that helped me get to where I am today will also help you in doing the same. I'd love to hear your music. I'd love to, uh, for you guys to connect with me on social media, uh, Facebook, Instagram. Those are kind of my main two. And obviously over at adamivy.com. Like I said, as always, all those links will be in the description box below. One more time, please subscribe to the channel. And until next time, you can find me at adamivy.com.